Welcome back. These days, you better not blink. If you do, you may well miss the latest and greatest technological advancement. Tech is advancing so quickly right now, it's changing the way businesses, big and small, do business. Here now to talk about what small businesses need to know to succeed is the author of The New Small. I'd like to welcome Jersey Guy, technology consultant, Phil Simon. Thanks for being here. Eric, thanks for having it's me. great to see you. All right, so we've got a lot of ground to cover because, as I just said, technology is changing almost by the minute it seems in many cases that you turn on the news and every day you hear about something else that at least as a consumer I say wow I gotta have that mm -hmm. um, my wife's not so crazy about it but first let's talk about some of the the new advancements that you are seeing in the workplace right now you and I were just saying what's an iPad right but you see them all over the place now and people are using them uh, in ways that I think that at first they might not have ever dreamed that they would be using them Absolutely. It, long gone are the days, I would argue, of even five years ago in which you basically knew that you needed a website and maybe productivity tools like Microsoft Office and maybe a customer relationship management application and that was it. Now you've got social media, you've got cloud computing, you've got all these different technologies, Twitter, Facebook, and everyone's saying, how can I use them? So against that backdrop, I said, why not write a book about it? Is there one particular piece of technology or one advancement more than any other that you think is, is just the most important piece or piece of the pie, I guess, that a small business owner should take into account? I wouldn't say that there's one. I'd say that there are five, and in the book I call them the five enablers. Uh, cloud computing, software as a service, free and open source software, social technologies, and mobility. So those are the five that I see, but of course in three or four years they may be completely different five. It, to your point, Eric, it just changes so rapidly these days. So let's go through the five. Okay. Starting with cloud computing. Sure. Uh, for the folks who don't know, what is that? Sure. I mean, I can give you a very technical definition, Eric, but long story short, cloud computing means your ability to access your data and your apps anywhere and at any time, as long as you have an internet connection. You don't have to be chained to your computer. And the second on your list? Software as a service. And it's kind of a cousin of cloud computing, but it's basically the ability to rent software or date before you get married, <laughs> right? So you pay by the transaction or by the user license. You don't have to spend 15 or 20 or $50,000 on an application and not know if you're going to use it well. What else do you have on the list there? Uh, the third one was free and open source software. Okay. So WordPress is a very popular tool for building websites. <coughs> Uh, Firefox is a free browser, but there are millions, even alternatives to traditional proprietary applications. So Microsoft Office is closed source or proprietary, but then there are tools like OpenOffice that are basically free productivity suites or even Google Docs. What well, would be the fourth on the list then? Uh, mobility. Okay. And we're talking about iPads and iPhones, and we just fundamentally access the internet now in different ways than we did even five years ago. And it's becoming faster and faster every time a new device comes out. Uh, the, the chips get better, the speed gets better, and, and it's it's uh, you know to be able to pull out your iPhone or an iPad these days and you know just type up something very quickly, get done what you would originally have had to you sit down in front of a computer for maybe 15, 20 minutes, log in. It's, it's amazing. It, I, I um, was able to get some work done in waiting to be on today's show. All right, and uh, the fifth in your list of keynotes. The fifth is social technology, social media, and social. Um, um, oh gosh, I'm not done. Social networking uh, sites. Right, right. Um, okay. So uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, creating individual networks. So uh, we just live in a very social world right now. Uh, how important do you think the social networking sites are? for these small businesses, well actually not just small businesses, big businesses and small businesses, because you see the, the larger businesses are on Facebook, small businesses too, um, everybody's on Twitter these days. Mm -hmm. uh, they're huge, and actually look this up, the average Facebook session time, just as one example, is 45 minutes. The average session length that someone spends on Google is 11 minutes, so it's four times longer. And Facebook with 630 million users would be the third largest country in the world. So when people say, do you think my business needs a, a fan page on Facebook, I would say, well, why wouldn't you want to potentially reach a, an audience that large? So uh, I think that it's huge. And for that reason, I think Goldman Sachs is a, a valued Facebook at something like $50 billion. They're not doing that because it's valueless. What businesses out there right now have inspired you, at least in the, in the way that they are using technology? Uh, funny you mention that, the 11 in the book. Okay. Uh, the book is rife with case studies from a, a law firm to a restaurant to a dental practice to some more sort of technology professional service oriented firms, but this book came together very quickly because these, these companies really inspired me. They were practicing what they preached. They were working virtually. They were focusing more on getting the results done as opposed to where were you at Friday at 5 o'clock. Give so, me an example. 
Oh gosh, there's so many, but there's one in the book, a company named Fuentech, and they do intellectual property consulting for the government. And the woman who runs the company, Laura Shapi, hasn't even met some of her employees. Mm -hmm. They all work virtually. And her theory is, and I agree with her, that if I don't trust people working from home, then I don't trust them working for me, period. Wow. All right. And uh, okay, so what should you consider, though, if you are a small business owner, or let's say you're looking to start a small business, what do you think that people should consider when trying to figure out which direction to take with all the new technologies that are out there right now? What, what would best work? I, I guess it sure. depends on the type of business. Absolutely. And I think that's a key point. If you're a demographic, let's say you sell wheelchairs. Well, not to get myself in trouble here, but a lot of older people don't spend as much time on Facebook or haven't even heard of it. So forcing someone to embrace social media may not make sense. Conversely, if you are an author, a writer, a consultant, a restaurant, why wouldn't you want to be not just on a site like Facebook, but a site like Yelp or Angie's List? Why aren't you paying attention to what people are saying about you when you're not there? So there's so many different ways you can take that question. That's one of the reasons I wrote the book. As many people as there are right now who are going out and they're, they're buying this new technology, they're getting into the tablet computers, um, there's still people who are resistant, mm -hmm. who are resistant to change. They, they like having everything written down in the ledgers. They like doing things the old-fashioned way. What, what would you say to them? It's tough. I mean, how do you convince people to change? Um, sometimes they don't want to do it for the sake of doing it. They do it because they're going to be forced. And the way the technology and the economy are evolving, they're not going to have the choice to do that anymore. If you can drop, say, 75% of your IT costs, like a law firm that I profile in the book did, by embracing cloud computing, then why wouldn't you want to do that? What business doesn't want to save that kind of money? So they may not do it, Eric, because of the carrot. Maybe they'll do it because of the stick. But you're absolutely right. There are plenty of small business owners out there that still think it's too complicated and they don't get it. So again, that's one of the reasons I wrote the book. Phil, thank you very much for being thank here. You. And if you have any questions or comments about anything in today's interview, send them to me at itsyourmoney at news12.com. We'll be right back.